Whew. Hi everyone, Big Thinny Cough Tano here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of this new Logic record, College Park. This is the newest full-length LP from Robert Bryson Hall II, aka Logic, a rapper, singer, songwriter, producer, whose popularity I think needs no introduction or explanation at this point, especially since uh, he seemingly rejected it in a way not too long ago when he uh, put himself himself into retirement, but that retirement has seemingly put him in a place where he is now more uh, prolific than ever. With No Pressure being one of his best projects to date, we got another Bobby Tarantino record out of him too, uh, Endless Beat Tapes. There was his tribute to old school hip hop on his Vinyl Days project, which was pretty good. Uh, he also fantasized about killing me on that album, which was special. And now we have arrived at College Park, a sort of narrative concept album that dives into Logic's past, but not too far into his past, more around 2011 when he was on the cusp of blowing up and was laying the foundation for what would be a very successful rap career. The album takes little time in throwing us into this narrative with an intro track that features a, a very long-winded build of vocal harmonies, but eventually this introduction gives way to a, a kind of zany rap beat and a logic dropping a lot of bars about, uh, I guess, aliens, or at least their extraterrestrial theme. Uh, referencing how Earth Girls are basic. RZA comes in with a flow that uh, comes across as convinced of its own genius, and in terms of corny levels, I hate to say, despite the fact that he is a legend, it's not that much better. The whole thing comes across more like a wordy rant than it does a verse. This portion of the track kind of ends out of nowhere, and as it turns out, this half-finished song is essentially just a part of a dream sequence. According to the bad acting that uh, is, is following here, in the ending sketch, which I guess in a way kind of makes sense. This does feel like a rap verse the RZA would spit if Logic were dreaming it in his mind. <laughs> but yeah, Logic wakes up from this dream as a younger version of himself, who again is not established in his rap career yet, and he is about to uh, go do a show later today, but he's gotta get something to eat first and we're off. Then we have the song Wake Up featuring Lucy Rose, which I didn't really love as a single, but I suppose it does make more sense within the context of the record. I just think the beat on the song is okay. As far as lyrical content, goes, there is a lot of a middle-brow social commentary. But again, I could see how this track is seeing a younger logic in the midst of a past mindset where he is wanting to advance past the world he was born into. Which, again, I suppose is fine and does add to the progression of the album story overall, but then it finishes up with a very on-the-nose narration um, from, again, I imagine Lucy Rose, whose English accent and articulation comes across as just really really, really proper, uh, maybe to the point where it's just not so fitting for this story. Like, are we witnessing the start of your rap career or are we entering Narnia? Which is it? I much prefer Lightsabers with C. Castro, which is some really lush, feel-good jazz rap with some woozy tones and triumphant horns. Here we have Logic waking up, being happy for the day, wanting to pursue a career and a passion that feels uh, right and true to him. Again, feels like a very true portrayal of a younger self. Plus, there's a few interesting beat switches along the progression of the track, too, which help enhance the narrative of the song pretty tastefully as Logic beckons to himself to come get some money, come get some fame. Then moments later, he's rap arguing with himself in terms of what direction he wants to go. Handily one of the best cuts here in terms of narrative, performance, and creative dynamics. But then things begin to take a bit of a nosedive on Clone Wars 3. I'm not crazy about this track, but I do find it personally interesting that Logic takes the time to admit to how derivative he's been across his career trying to chase after the sounds and styles of his contemporaries, or just some of the biggest artists who have influenced him. Be it Jay-Z, Kendrick, Cole, Eminem, what have you. He says on this track there are days when he wishes he was those artists, but he ultimately comes to the conclusion that uh, uh, they could never be him, I guess, because of the culmination of experiences and tastes and uh, artistic ideas that he has bubbling up in his head. Which is a real realization for sure, but kind of a shocking one for him to arrive to so late in his career. 
career. And sure, while the point he makes deeper into the track is true that nothing is really all that original and everybody is borrowing from someone, I still think it is upon the artist in some way, shape, or form to find their own way to stand out, and I still think that Bobby fails to do that on this cut. Seems like he's just kind of giving himself a pass on uh, having to do that, because, uh, again, uh, nothing's entirely original anyway. Overall, the song is like some bland motivational poster jazz rap that uh, is pleasant while it's on, but doesn't really stick with me. In fact, the most memorable part of the entire cut is the uh, awful sketch that takes up way too much room in the last leg. Like, where is the joke here? It's just Logic and his friends ordering at the drive-thru uh, at a burger place, and it's also Logic doing a funny voice through the drive-thru speaker. Like, none of it's witty, none of it's funny. The dialogue between uh, Logic and his friends is bad and just comes across as unnatural. There's no real setup or reveal on this track. It's just filler taking up time on the record. Following this, we have Red Pill 7, which Logic kicks off lyrically uh, by saying that his flow is non-binary, it never miss. He also says he has a therapist from the Outback and uh, she helps him when he feels down under. Uh, and people are afraid of therapy because it's taboo and that's messed up, guys. Even though we arguably live in an era where, like, therapy Therapy is more widely accepted than ever in, in terms of just something that we should all be involved in and doing. Even though I guess, yes, it could be better, but, but still. The only section of the track that really stood out to me was the whole substance abuse passage, not only because of the way Logic's point flows logically on the song, but also the barrage of internal rhymes and slant rhymes that he works into his bars at this point. It's actually pretty great. It's that real boom bap lyrical miracle hip hop shit. Then from here we have of, uh, more English accent narrations plus strings, which seem to force a sense of purpose into the album's story and logic's operation within the rap industry, making it seem like uh, he made a music career as a public service or something. <laughs> which, I mean, sure, his music is very inspirational to a lot of people, that's true. But, like, you're not Mother Teresa for it. Plus, this seems like kind of the wrong angle to take with a rap album post Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers, where even Kendrick had to come to terms with the limitations of his influence, even with his very respectable music career. The song Playwright is just some light tribe called Quest Worship, I would say. Swinging beat, sleepily sung vocal passages, it's okay, I suppose. The worst part is really hearing another very long sketch at the end of the song, where the acting is awful. Once again, it feels like I'm being subjected to an after-school special, but with swears. Bro, I am so excited for the concert this evening. Gee golly, I am as well. We're going to kill that shit, my brother in Christ. The Gaithersburg freestyle, though, with all of Logic's crew coming together on a posse cut is actually pretty hard-hitting and definitely a highlight on the project. It's kind of like their own little backseat freestyle. It's 2011 all over again, and all these guys kind of throw down on a nice banger beat. The following in Scipio continues to explore Logic's I guess, motivations when it comes to initiating hip-hop career. Is it for the money? Is it for the art? Which we still do not have a definite answer on, but what we do get is more narration and strings, but with a, a heaping helping of horns this time, too. This section of the track is all about accepting age and life's changes, which I suppose is cool and, and great and speaks to the current point at which uh, Logic is at in his career and his life, though it doesn't really say too much about the story in, in this very moment, I guess. The chill flows from Logic and String Laced Beat on the following self-medication are pretty good. Redman is featured on the track, too, and his verse is just a really intense and gigantic trauma dump. Uh, very good, though. Static Selecta is featured on the song, too, with uh, some DJ cuts, but also on this track, we, we have... <laughs> God. We have Family Guy's Seth MacFarlane uh, doing his best Frank Sinatra impression, which I suppose does make sense as Logic messes with Seth. Uh, Seth messes with him. Logic used to be known as, you know, obviously a, a young Sinatra, a rat pack, that whole thing. So, I mean, in a way, I kind of get it, but uh, is it a tasteful inclusion in the song? Not really. Uh, it's, it's pretty corny, honestly. And I just don't really take <laughs> Seth all that seriously as a vocalist. And of course, after this, we get another 
another awkward sketch where, again, it's earlier in the day. It's a lead up to the performance we've been hearing about since the first track. Logic and his friends are kind of slowly culminating to uh, end up forming like Voltron at this performance. We have dialogue like, <laughs> Where the bitches at? No, my brother in Christ, where the beats at? Past this point, I guess we hit a bit of uh, a good streak in the track list. We have Shimmy with Joey Badass, which is a very tastefully put together cut with a lot of ODB references. There is Paradise 2 with Nora Jones, which is super classy, goes over without a hitch, again, outside of the sketch at the end, where there's like a gas station robbery. The guy who's robbing the place like falls over and shoots himself accidentally, but when that happens, I don't know because the, the progression of it is so convoluted. I've listened to it over and over and I just find the whole thing too chaotic and confusing. But what is clear is that uh, a girl working the counter, which of course is seemingly played by logic, because anytime he can work, uh, you know, a girly voice into a sketch, he, he's, he's doing it, because that's the extent of his humor on this project. Yeah, uh, this girl who uh, in a way gets saved by the boys uh, in the midst of this robbery uh, is now encouraged to suck one of their dicks. Yeah, that's... That's great. The song Come On Down is another highlight on the record that uh, portrays the act of deeply involving yourself in the music industry to uh, selling your soul and doing so in, in almost like this game show type context. You're heading on down to the front of the stage for some weird ass blood sacrifice thing. I mean, I think the rapping and the beat on this thing is great. I like some of the dark imagery. Uh, the only thing I don't really care for about the track is that it's likely to flare up another series of responses from weirdos on the internet who see the entertainment industry purely as like this Illuminati satanic front or something. The track Village Slum another highlight for me comes across with very sad introspective Eminem energy where logic is reflecting on alcoholism, escapism, being afraid of becoming his parents every single time he takes a drink, and through the way he's currently living his life, just breaking that cycle of addiction. Again, it's a very good song, a very meaningful track, I think one of the most meaningful in Logic's entire catalog, but then the vibe here is kind of ruined by another awful skit where we go back into the past and Logic is with his friends in the car they're smoking weed, which I suppose is appropriate given the context of the song about substance abuse, but the tone of the dialogue here sucks. Of course, past this sketch, we get a very generic stoner anthem, which is about the most boring song about smoking that I've ever heard in my life. Like, literally anybody could have written this song. It's pretty disappointing that someone with Logic's level of experience in making music and the rap game wrote a track this bland. At this point, the songs on the record are becoming more and more mid, and it feels like they only exist just to have more snippets of the album's narrative attached to them so that that can get just tied up. We see Logic like at this performance where there's just like 150 people there, which he's amazed by at the time, but he continues to belabor this point just to, you know, sort of illustrate that, yeah, now since then I've played to a lot more people than 150. It's, it's a really uh, obvious humble brag. And on the closing track, once again, we see Logic like explaining why he went mainstream. And I guess at this point we know, not only from what he said earlier on the record, but uh, earlier on songs that he released before this record and in interviews as well. Yeah, okay, you love uh, the genre you operate in, but you also wanted to feed your family, so you made a bunch of mainstream stuff too. And despite all of his talk about I don't know, being himself and uh, wanting to just kind of stick to doing him, he ends up rapping over a jazz sample that Kendrick and Lamar himself helped popularize on his Section 80 project, uh, which is maybe the most truly 2011 thing about this entire record. From here, we have more dialogue, closing thoughts, Logic talking about being afraid of what people expect of him, and, and this feeling kind of plaguing his career, plaguing his mind for the next 10 years. I feel like I'm being subjected to the melodramatic inner dialogue of an anime character. Senpai, what, what if I never become the master, master of all music, music, and people, and people only want, want to hear me rap? rap? At which point he begins to talk about how he wants to play guitar, and then the track turns into a sad boy guitar song, which is built off a couple of chords, a really uninspired melody. It's It's... Uh, definitely not as good as the rapping. I'm not against Logic going in this direction, but I think if he wants to do it, he needs to 
get more into the style so that he understands its inner workings and gets what makes for a, you know, kind of inspiring and interesting guitar song, uh, like he does sort of sense on uh, a fan level what makes for an interesting rap song. Yeah, I left this project just kind of feeling really confused and uh, kind of concerned, because while this record is a, a dive into Logic's not-so-distant past, the way this record depicts his entrance into the game, it's almost like his good kid Mad City. But I still don't feel like I came away from this project knowing or understanding Logic's motivations, his point of view, uh, and any better than I did before. It feels like a reiteration of roughly the same things we've heard him say before in previous songs and interviews. It's about the music. It's about the art. But yet I also made a bunch of popular radio-friendly rap songs so that I could make money. I never changed. I never changed. I'm myself. I never changed. But yet also I used to be really insecure and I definitely changed that. And also here's a bunch of other ways I changed. And I'm going to be myself. I'm tired of trying to be other things. I'm going to be me. I'm myself. Yet a lot of his music still comes across as like boasting while also emulating the sounds and styles and vibes of his favorite artists. After another album, I just don't really feel like I know who Logic is artistically. For sure I know what his voice sounds like, I could pick it up out of a lineup, but uh, I don't really know what a Logic song sounds like. And I don't really get a strong sense of what he wants to be on this record either. Does he want to be a hip-hop game changer? Does he want to be a sad guitar strumming guy? Does he want to be a motivational speaker with a record contract? Or a man who lives purely for himself and his own happiness? Truly I have no idea as the intentions and directions of this record are scattershot as hell. There are truly no strong takeaways on this thing. Logic is still at a point where I think he is figuring himself out and uh, that has really left me on the fence with this LP. I'm feeling a light five on this thing. Transition, have you given this record a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best, you're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like. Please subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head, it's another video you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, Logic, Forever.